What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Sunday, October 27th, uh, 2024. My name is Chris. Uh, I am a freelance sports journalist based out of Minnesota here, also working sales and also a proprietor of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder, where I like to talk to individuals about their why and get to know them outside of their occupation. I got a special guest that's going to be coming on with me today. Her name is Daniela Vega. Uh, she's a Rutgers alum, uh, not only with her bachelor's degree, but also with a master's as well at Rutgers. Uh, she is the executive assistant uh, for the EVP talent in Anzio Williams uh, for NBCU. And she's also the executive assistant for the chairman uh, of that NBCU uh, Universal Local as well. Prior to that, she worked at CNBC uh, in Espanol business slash breaking news intern. She was there for nine months. So we're going to talk to her about her why of getting into media. Uh, we're going to ask her some fun questions. Uh, we're going to get to know her story a little bit. So, Without any further ado, I introduce to you the wonderful, the talented, and the beautiful, Daniela Becker. Hi. Good evening there. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. I just want to say... Uh, thank you for coming on to my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. I really do appreciate that. Of course. Well, thank you for inviting me and having me here. <laughs> Absolutely. No question. I want to say, um, or I want to ask you, I should say, how's your week been going? It's been going well. Um, just, you know, kind of getting everything together, you know, just another work week. Um, but not everything's good. You know, Halloween weekend is, is approaching. So you see everyone kind of starting to get their trick-or-treating in and costumes and all that stuff. So that's fun. But how, how are you? How was your trip? Oh, yeah. My trip was very good. Um, cannot uh, I can't overstate that enough. I mean, um, <laughs> there was just so many good things on that boat, so many good things on the cruise. I was sad that it ended. But nonetheless, I got a lot of pictures, a lot of photos that I took put them on my social media sites that people saw and commented on. And I got a lot of text messages too. So it was crazy. Um, going over like, oh, let us, give us your itinerary. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Right. So, but trust me, 2025 will be another year for me to go on a cruise. It yeah. definitely will be my last one for sure. Yes. I mean, I think traveling is just the best because, you know, it, I think I, heard somewhere someone was like traveling is the way to stop time and so you kind of just enjoy the moment and stuff like that and that's great that's great no, i'm glad you enjoyed your trip thank you danielle i appreciate that i want to i want to reiterate to you why i wanted to uh, bring you on here i mean it's, to me it's pretty obvious uh like i said you are somebody who works at nbcu universal if you're i believe you're the executive assistant to not only the chairman but also the evp of talent as you worked uh work there you also uh been working as uh, was working at cnbc uh as a breaking news intern as well and you obviously are very decorated with the bachelor's and a master's <laughs> uh, as well so to me it was a no-brainer to come on here talk to you about your why of why you wanted to get into media me being a journalist as well i love media too and i'm also in line to get my master's may of 25 so oh, congratulations Thank you so much. So I'm definitely um, likewise like you. I love media. So I definitely want to kind of break bread with you and get to know you a little bit, too. Cause I got some fun questions in here I want to ask you as well. Of course. Ask away. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. OK, so the first question, as I always do, Daniela, on my Work Hard, Play Harder podcast is what is your why? What is your why of doing what you do? Did you have any role models growing up? Did you have any um, inspirations growing up? I don't know if you're from New Jersey or not, but <laughs> tell me about your background, your, your past, and what is your why of wanting to get into the media business? So my why as to, you know, wanting to be hardworking and stuff like that really stems from my parents and my family background. Um, I come from a Hispanic background, so it's in our blood to be working hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but just to really just seeing the success and the trajectory of my own parents and my siblings and or my one sibling and, you know, my cousins and my family members, just seeing how much effort and love they put into everything that they do. I just like, OK, well, if I want to get to what I need and what I want, 
then I need to put in just as much effort as they're putting in or more, you know, depending on what I want to do. And sure. so actually, when it came to my career, um, my mom was my biggest role model because I saw how she acted in her position. And I was like, oh, I want to do exactly that. So I, I actually going into college, wanted to major in what she was majoring, which was communications. Okay. Um, and I think at the time it just wasn't for me. So I was so upset because I felt so bad. I felt like I was letting her down by not following her footsteps. Um, right. but I know, you know, like she appreciated me wanting to, you know, follow her, but at the same time, it is my own path. Um, and so that's when I found journalism and I love to write. I love to, you know, edit, just give me anything. I'll scratch everything away. Um, okay. but more specifically, I love the broadcast media aspect of it because you're not only telling a story, you're kind of, oh, I want to be a producer. So I'm kind of in even more in the back end of getting everything together to see that final product happen. And I think sure. that's such a big accomplishment to, to have. And so I just kind of kept going on with that. And I think my biggest help was being able to have that time management and determination. And that all stemmed from being an athlete. So I was a student athlete for about 12 years of my life. So I knew that I, if I want something, I need to put in the time, the dedication, the, you know, just the prior, having my, all my priorities listed down. And that's what Absolutely. I put into, and that's what I put into my work today. You know, if you see my office or my desk, it's like, I have lists and post-it notes of everything I need to do and the order that I need them to be done because I want to make sure I get everything done the way it needs to be. And in a manner that can also help everyone else that's, you know, that's going to be accompanied by it. Sure. I'm a planner too. I'm a huge yeah. planner. Uh, I like, as you know, obviously, uh, from what I've, what our initial talks of yeah. getting this podcast episode together, I love to plan stuff out because I like to do my thing. I like to go places, uh, of course, work hard, play harder. That's what I love to do. Exactly. I love to work hard. Exactly. I love to have fun too. So exactly. I can respect that. Now you said student athlete, what sports did you play? I play, I swam swimming. Oh. Okay. Okay. So are we talking like breaststroke, 100 meters, 200 meters, all that? <laughs> no, uh, freestyles. So I was mid distance, mid distance. Oh, okay. I can respect that. No doubt. No doubt. I also got to shout out to your, your sorority, Lambda Theta, if I'm saying that right, <laughs> Lambda Theta, because yeah, I listen, that, that was one of Theta Alpha Latin Sorority Incorporated. Yes. That's right. That's one of my favorite sororities for many reasons. <laughs> No question about it. Um, no question. I I, I love I definitely love helping out when I was in college. Mm -hmm. I love to donate and help out. And there was all type of things going on, whether they were selling at my university. Sometimes they would have like a uh, pie, like you can get pie for like two dollars, or you yes, can sell I've been pie before. <laughs> so yeah. So you know the feeling. And I have too. I, I donated my money and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is a good cause. I don't normally get hit with pie, but y'all can definitely do that. No problem. So Got a exactly. shout out. Always, always about giving back and you know finding ways to help the community in whichever way we can. Yeah, absolutely. And I, like I said, I love y'all sorority, so I had to quit shout out quickly of uh, that sorority. No question. Um, we, let's talk about it. You went to Rutgers University. Uh, I want to know, uh, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to Rutgers? Because Piscataway, New Jersey. Not many <laughs> people know about Piscataway now, <laughs> but I do because I had a niece that goes there. Uh, yeah. And I, I know a couple of people that went there as well. So talk to me about uh, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you or not? Um, there were a few other schools. I think a lot had to do with one location and two um, swimming uh, that had a lot to do with it. Um, but to be honest, Rutgers has always been my home. I swam at Rutgers from the time I was seven to the time I finished the college, uh, swimming in college, you know, so it was just always there and it was a no brainer, you know, being, having that familiarity of home and, you know, just the teams I've been on that have swam at Rutgers. It just, it was just amazing. And it was really great. So then, you know, just having that first, you know, initial point of like, okay, well, you know, athletics wise, great, you know, now let me see um, academics because, you know, both need to go hand in hand, you know, absolutely very much a big thing in my family and I'm sure in most families as well um so education wise everything was great you know as I mentioned before communications was something I wanted to pursue initially and they had a great communications program you know I turned into journalism but that's even been amazing too because I have so many mentors so many people that have helped me you know 
advance my career and get to where I am now and I'm sure into the future as well so everything just played right and I'm so happy because I'm also close to home too so it's it just it just worked out amazingly okay now are you from Jersey or New York I'm from Jersey from Jersey okay okay I so have, I have a lot of family in New York so New York's my second home I feel that very close very close together now you can you can answer this for me since you know you Jersey and New York you know what I mean so the first time that I ever went to New Jersey, and I'm gonna say New Jersey and New York, but first time I went to New Jersey, I got lost on a mega bus. Um, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. So I was supposed to go to um, Rochester, New York. That's where my uh, father lives. Um, so I was trying to meet him, and I ended up in Secaucus, New Jersey, and I had no idea where the hell I was. I was like bugging out. I was like, there's no buses, it's two in the morning. All I see is a McDonald's, but it's dark. Ain't no lights on. I'm hungry. <laughs> like, it was crazy. Like, that was, it was, you know. It was I'm, definitely a day for you. Definitely. Yeah, a right? It was. Now, I want to tell you this, though, because I also went to New York. Please tell me that the street meat is good. Because I keep hearing about this street meat. Is it good? Is it worth it trying? Really depends. It really depends okay. on where you go. Because I've had people say street meat's great. And I've also had my brother who did not have a great experience. So it really depends on where you go. And I, I think also just how hungry you might be. Um, well, I ain't going to cap. I definitely was a little little hungry when I got off that Megabus. <laughs> Megabus days are behind me now. Now I can afford better things than Megabus. But well, that's good. Back, that's good. <laughs> yes. Back then, I had to take the Megabus. And I was like, okay, I got off. My man said, hey, do you want some street meat? And I was like, what you just say? And he was like, do you want, <laughs> he said, you want some street meat? And I'm like, nah, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. Where I'm from, we don't do no street meat, bro. I don't know what you're talking yeah, I don't about. I don't know if I should trust that or not. <laughs> right. You know, I was like a little skeptical. Like, yo, that's, I don't know about that. Just give me a Sprite. If you, <laughs> you got something to drink, we good. I was like, all right, cool. I just wanted to ask that question. Um, I want to ask you some favorite questions, though, Daniela. And you just give me the 411 off the rip based upon these questions, okay? All right. You got it. No problem. Here we go. Here we go. Favorite meal you like to cook? Oof. Um... Hmm. Well, I gotta go with my with my Hispanic roots. I have to go with my Hispanic roots. So it's rice and beans, um, any kind of beans, to be honest. Um, okay. I, I do not judge. Um, steak and chicken mm. really can go with any. Um, tostones. I don't know if you know what tostones are, but they're fried plantains that are flattened and and just refried again. Amazing. Okay. Um, so yeah, I honestly, I'm not a big meal person. I just love taking things from here and there. So if I like something, I'm like, all right, that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be cooked next. So anything, okay. everything just, but mostly a lot, love my Hispanic food. Yeah. You definitely the kind of person I need to be around. You said anything <laughs> and everything. I'm with that. <laughs> I, when it comes to food, those are the two words I love to hear. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, and you said totones. Is that what you said? Totones, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that sound. I mean, that sounded good. It sounded real good. I like that. I, I, what I do is I take, depending on how big, because I um I'm half Colombian, so I I went to Colombia. They had the big ones like this, and you have the little ones too. So it really depends on, um, where you go. But I just take that and I pile on rice, beans, chicken, and um and guacamole too. Like that's that's just amazing. You still to deal with the guac. You got the guac <laughs> on it. You're good. I'm good with I'm, Hispanic food. Is probably uh one or two uh in my in in my wheelhouse. Definitely, I'm I'm a huge taco person, so I love making tacos. Uh, but I'm also a reporter that works sports, so I'm I'm really getting home late at night, like eleven sometimes. That's the one so, thing that'll be right there. Hello, whip that up real quick. We could do that real quick. But also, I like Italian food too, so that'd be my favorite. Italian food is very good. Very absolutely, good. no doubt. Um, favorite concert you've ever attended? Wow, oof! I would have to say, uh, really on the top there was Bad Bunny. He did a really great show. He did, you know, just amazingly. But recently, I went to a, you know, um, those radio stations how they have those group. Uh, concerts where they bring in different artists so it's a lot of Hispanic art artists too and that was amazing because I because I feel like it's enough to get little snippets of each artist rather than pay for a whole thing um sure. I mean I'm sure if anyone wants to pay for a whole concert go ahead but you know it, instead of having to do spend so much money all the time if you get one big thing right there it's it's amazing right. yeah 
No, that's pretty dope. Now, I used to do, when I was in Atlanta, that's where I went to uh, college at, Kennesaw State University. When I was in Atlanta, I was doing um, security. Um, So I was doing security for a lot of concerts and events. Um, So one of the events that really shocked me was Romeo Santos. And the reason why it really shocked me was because I didn't believe how the ladies went crazy for this man. Yes. Ah, that reminds me. I did go to, not his individual concert, but the group band that he's in. And you can just uh, the ladies were falling for him. Oh my god! It was. It's it was hard. It was hard doing security that night because the ladies were trying to tug and pull. And his concert, the way they set up in Atlanta, he came out to the crowd, so we had to walk with him, like oh, side by side security, to make sure that you know he wouldn't get trampled. It was like five or six of us in a, in a line, so I was like, "Yo, these these women is crazy," but the. The one concert that I thought that really surprised me that I was like, you know, I don't really know much of the words, but it's jamming. It's Ozuna. Ozuna concert was really good. That was bopping. That was a bop. I was like, man, I was I don't know what you're saying, yo. I don't know what you're saying, but this 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 right here is a bop i was like okay i feel this so yeah and i think that's what it is so you don't need to necessarily know what the words mean but you know if the if the rhythm and everything just goes with it you're you're just going to be like oh my goodness like yeah i'm sold <laughs> yes i was definitely sold on him for sure uh i don't know if i forgot who's the uh song but it's a recent song that i just added to my uh, pandora list called sosa uh, oh. uh sosa and it's the remix uh, which is really good. I had yeah. just had it. The remixes are good. Sometimes they can be hit or miss, but lately they've been pretty good, which is, pretty which good. is good. Yeah. No doubt. I like that, though. Um, Favorite place you ever traveled to? Wow. These are hard questions. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would have to say it, Italy. It was my favorite. Yeah. Okay. What yeah. now? What trip was that? Was that like a girls' trip, a family trip? What was that? Um, it was a family trip, and then I studied abroad there as well. So I got wow. uh, to have two different kinds of, um, I guess, views and experiences with that. So it was, I it was love that. yeah, it was nice. I would definitely, I would have said Cabo San Lucas because I went there prior to the cruise, but I just went to uh the Cayman Islands and I thought that was just. I can, uh, that's that's on my bucket list. That's oh one of the God. Stuff Put it on there. Put it on there. Yeah, listen, it wasn't as hot as Mexico. Mexico was scorching. Cozumel was scorching, no doubt. It's the sun. Like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It was scorching out there. But the Cayman Islands, I got a chance to swim with the stingrays and the dolphins, signed up for an excursion, did that. Yeah, I was in the water. I was having me a good time. As you can see, I'm a little tan now. So, you know. (laughs) Oh, take advantage of the sun, yeah. Absolutely. No, here it's it's getting to be winter, so there's not a lot of sun to to enjoy. about it i'm in minnesota you in new york city so we both in the same boat so i totally understand that minnesota that's cold (laughs) that is yeah tell me about it tell me about it yeah um two more of the favorites now i'm a sports person okay so i gotta ask you a sports question favorite sport you like to watch on tv favorite sport you like to attend in person could be the same sport favorite sport i like to watch on tv is baseball favorite sport i like to like attend in person is swimming Okay, I like that. So, you know, your Yankees are down. I don't know if you Yankees are Mets. They but are, know. they are. Yesterday, I was, I thought, I thought we could do it. I thought we could do it, but no, but it's okay. We have a few more games left. They're going to be home soon. So, you know, maybe just being a little bit homesick, it's, that, that was messing with them up, but it's okay. They're going to, they're going to come back. Very true. Very true. Now, listen, games three, four, and five are in New York. What is those World Series tickets prices like? The the tickets to st- just stand stand alone. It was I think a minimum of a thousand ninety one dollars when I last checked. When I last checked, I know, Holy crap. <laughs> I know some people who spent almost five thousand dollars. I know, it, uh uh-uh. <laughs> and I don't even know where their seats are. I don't. Even, I think just the fact of being there is enough for them. But yeah. that is just crazy. I'm like, you know what? I'm a diehard Yankees fan, but Maybe I'll just watch from the TV where it's a little bit more free. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, and, and more accessible too. You ain't got to step over nobody to go to the bathroom. No. You ain't you can get your own drinks and your food, snacks yeah. or whatever. 
Exactly. Everything at my leisure. No need to worry about anything. I do remember when I was in Atlanta for my last year, which was 2021. That's when the Braves won the World Series. We were right outside of Tourist Park in that um, mm -hmm. watching the game on the big screen. because We couldn't get in because, you know, like I said, like you said, the ticket prices are just crazy. But it was such a party afterwards when they won the just, World Series. Just having the parade alone, I'm sure that was just that was just crazy. Crazy, yeah. It was it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool uh, experience, no doubt. Last of the favorites, Daniela. This is favorite restaurant that you like to eat at, and I'm going to tell. I'm going to say this right here. Uh, the Sugar Shack is overrated. The I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say that it's overrated. <laughs> okay, noted, noted. Um, so fun fact. I actually am gluten free. That's that's my diet. Um, so not a lot of the regular, you know, places are on my list because <laughs> I cannot eat there. Um, but there is this one place called Sensa Gluten in New York. They have two locations, one in Chelsea and one in Hell's Kitchen. I primarily go to one in Chelsea. Um, and it's com it's Italian food, but it's completely gluten free. But mm. the best part of it is is that all the ingredients are imported straight from Italy. So okay. really, so my two of my family members, my brother and my father, they are not gluten free, and they tell me that it's pretty much the same. They don't taste any difference. Um, but I think that for me personally, it's being able to enjoy Italian food the way it is, um, right. but end up at a rate that I can actually eat at. So it's it's great. It's my favorite place. I try to go there maybe once a month just to give myself the opportunity to eat there. But yeah, favorite place hands down. So check this out. So I, I will be in New York the next two times, at least two times in the next four months. One of the times will be my birthday. It's going to be around my birthday time. Ah, very nice. Yes, absolutely. Listen, I yeah. got to hit you up when I'm there. Okay. I will promise okay. I will do that. I got, no I got, I got a list of restaurants, both gluten free and non gluten free waiting for you. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I love it. I love it. So now, Danielle, I want to talk to you about your day to day because one of the things that intrigued me on why I wanted to I have a conversation with you is being an executive assistant to uh, the talent EVP and to the chairman. That has to be a different kind of role than what journalists or most like, you know, communicative people roles are in. I want to know, how does your day start? What do you do as far as a job to job process? Uh, what time does your day end? Does it have to? I mean, if the chairman has some breaking stuff or has to do something on the mat, do you get called and be like, you got to come back? And like, what what is your job uh, functions uh, throughout the day and throughout the week? Of course. So um, I'm in person um, with the chairman. So she works for um, the local stations. So that's more of like, you know, the small the smaller divisions, but they still do a lot in regards to news and how far they're spread across the country and, you know, just the world in general. Um, so I primarily work right literally right next to her. Um, and then the executive vice president of Talent Strategic Initiatives and Impact, he is based in Miami. So I'm more remote with him. But whenever he does come in, you know, then that's where we are. Um, it can the day to day can honestly vary a lot. Like I'm sure how it is with journalists in the newsroom yeah. and reporters out on the field, you're never gonna have the same day. Um, no. which I like because I like to be busy. I like to be up and out and just running and everything. So it's you know it's amazing. Um, so I usually have maybe once or twice a week. I have an overview of the week current and the week before and the week after with them just to make sure you know that there's anything I need to work on if they anything they need on their schedules and stuff like that just to make their lives a little bit easier because they have you know 20 million things going on in their minds and in their in their jobs alone so if there's any way I can make it easier that's my job and that's that's just honestly just what I want to do um so I'm usually scheduling a lot of their appointments as in you know scheduling meetings with you know whoever wants to have a talk with them um whoever they want to talk to too you know sometimes my one of my bosses will say hey can you get me like 15 minutes with so and so that's great I'll put in that appointment I'll put in that meeting and you know whatever it is you know so it's a lot of reaching out too because yes I be working for the chairman of local and I'm working for the executive vice president not everyone is on their schedule so you may have to be very cognizant of that and um sure. That allows me to network a lot because even though I'm doing just a little talk of, hey, you know, is so-and-so available at this time um, and stuff like that, it's still kind of generating that time of 
little short talks to open that window and to open that door of, okay, you know, we've had a good relationship so far in this, the regular professional aspect. Hey, can I actually talk to you for like 15 minutes about what I want to do and ask you questions about yourself? Um, so that's where I think it's really great. You know, just having those little conversations um, can go a long way. And, you know, just saying hello too and those things. So for anyone watching, um, say hello and, you know, that open up that door and, you know, it can really go far. Um, but yeah, so in the, your regard of, you know, when does, when do, when do I go home and all that stuff? I under know that there are some people who tend to go home at the time that they're um, from the, at the end of their nine to five, I do like to stay later just in case either of my bosses have any last minute requests or if someone comes in and says, hey, I need to talk to them for a few minutes, only because you never know what could happen if, you know, they need me. And, you know, what if I'm in the middle of walking to the train or bus station and I, I'm a little limited on my resources? So once I know that they're OK and they're out of the office then I'm like, OK, now I can, you know, pack up and go just like I said, you know, just to make sure I have everything down packed. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, every, every day is different, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen, but you have an idea so you can prepare. Um, but yeah, just always being, I'm always on the go and I'm always, you know, have my phone in my hand just, just in case, because like I said, you just never know. I figured that, you know, it's very similar to journalists, but just a little different because you're in an office setting. Uh, and, you know, your, your thing is to pretty much cater to what the chairman and what the EVP would like to like for you to do. Um, but it's very similar to journalists like being on the go and always having to differentiate every single day between stories and different things that you're doing, which is the main reason why I love being a journalist, because I don't know if I could sit at a desk and do the same thing over and over again. I'm like, damn, can we switch it up at some point, <laughs> like do something different? Right. So I and love that more to, you know, every position, you know, you could have like what sure. you do every day and then what um, what else has happens in the in the back end, too, because, you know, you're just like, OK, you know, as a journalist, yes, you know, every day you're going to be writing something or you're going to be producing something. And, you know, in my position, yes, I know I'm going to be scheduling everything, but there's always 20 more things on top of that, you know, that could happen. And, you know, just and, and that's in and everything. So, yeah, they they're both different positions, but they both go in hand very well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you, have you ever thought about being in front of the camera? Because I know the camera would definitely love you if you wasn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you talked about being a producer. I heard that being in the background, kind of controlling everything. And I can certainly see that role for you because you seem like a person that definitely can, you know, be on top of everything, but also kind of direct very well. Right. So but have you ever thought about being in front of the camera? I have. I tried it once. Um, I did enjoy it. I think it's just more of, okay, where's, where am I going to kind of go from here? You know, try to see like where my layout of what I want to do professionally. Um, but I'm very open to it. I have, you know, I have asked like, oh, you know, what is it like to be in front of the camera? You know, especially when it comes to breaking news, because you can just be, you know, let's say you're pre-recording something and it's fine. But if you're live, completely different you know you Without have to question. remain yeah. calm you have to remain you just and calm compose just everything and so i don't know we'll see we'll see where life takes me <laughs> okay i like that now let's talk about mental health and work-life balance now being in this industry as you know daniela um a lot of the times you hear words like burnout uh overworked and underpaid mm -hmm. um this industry, you just don't get a lot of money off the rip. You really don't. You got to really grind. This is like I tell people all the time, especially my young boys is what I like to call them, my high schoolers and the college people. Hey, um, if you really want to be in this industry, the same way that you practice hard when you're playing as an athlete, the same way you got to come at it hard in this profession. But understand okay. that you have to love what you're doing to be in this profession because this profession doesn't allocate a lot of money. Um, talk to me about your mental health or how you keep it strong, but also talk to me about the balance. Like you said, you sometimes like to stay later. Every day is not the same. We don't work regular business hours like your friends get the clock out eight to five or eight to four or whatever that is. So talk to me about how you manage both of those. It definitely takes a lot of adjustment, um, you know, because you have to take in how much you want to sleep, how much time you want to allocate for, you know, eating, you know, just you, you have your home life and you also have your work life. Um, 
And so I'm not going to say that my schedule that I've finally kind of come around to has been easy to get to. Um, sure. There have been times where, you know, I just want to stay home a little bit longer or, you know, sleep in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the big thing is to kind of just, you have to breathe a lot um, because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I get home and I say, you know, I just, I just want no one to talk to me. I just want to sit in the couch for a little bit. Um, but I do know that it, you know, I do want to keep myself working because I don't want to become, I guess, in a way so sluggish that I can't, you know, let the next day kind of go well, in a sense. Right. So like you don't want to be stagnant is what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to be stagnant. And I know that I will kick myself in the butt the next day for allowing myself to be like that. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's a lot of trial and error and you have to be open to it. Um, it does get frustrating. It does, you know, become like, oh, my goodness, if I maybe I just if I left a little bit earlier or if I do those things like, you know, take those into considerations, but don't harp on it. Because it's just going to make, you know, the next day, the next week so much harder to to deal with because you're already you're thinking so much on that. that you're not focusing on the now. And, it's right. you know, you're like you're trying to plan so much. And it's not it's not good. And, you know, like we had mentioned, you know, being planners or, you know, working on time management, you know, take that time right. to sit down. Like I I will I will say I took the time to sit down and look at my schedule. I'm like, OK, what are the things I really want to get done throughout the day? And be like, how can I manage that? You know, taking transportation to consideration, taking, you know, do I want to go to the gym? How much time do I want to eat? How much time do I want to sleep? You know, like I said, trial and error. Um, but, you know, it's very important to make sure you have that downtime for yourself because, you know, you have that burnout, you have that, you know, am I feeling, you know, like this is worth it and stuff like that. And yes, it's worth it, like you said, but if you have passion for your job and if you want to continue doing it, if there is no passion or if there's, you know, you're just focusing too much on one thing rather than the other, it will work, but will not work for the long haul. And that's, sure. yeah. And so just making sure like, okay, you know, putting your needs first and whatever you want. And I think that's with everyone too, your own trajectory on what you want to get out of what you're doing and, you know, just go on from there. So I think that's really what will help. Absolutely. It's a great answer, by the way, very, very good answer, but it's a question that's worth asking because in, like, in many different industries, uh, people do experience mental health breakdowns. People do experience burnout. Um, in our industry, it's happened many times. I'm sure you've had colleagues that kind of have stepped away and went to something different. I know I've had people that okay. I've known in the yeah. industry and stepped away, and that's totally fine. But mm -hmm. it's the A and B side is why I really ask the questions. Because the A side is covering things, uh, being able to um you know do what you're passionate about storytell right in a, all different kind of forms whether it's broadcast print uh feature stories you know whether you're covering a game or doing news but there's also a b-side and the b-side is that sometimes you do work late hours sometimes you don't get the the kind of pay that you want sometimes you uh, miss holidays sometimes you miss celebrations and you miss certain things like that and it and listen, we know what we're signing up for when we sign it, exactly. but it's important that people that come into this industry also know that A and B side. Because sometimes they think it's kind of glamorous because they see people on TV doing yeah. it. Um, and the most important thing is it can be glamorous, but it is not as glamorous as you think it is off the rip. You got to really grind and you got to really know these things. So once you intake all the information, all that 411, and you make a decisive decision there, then that's great. That's awesome. Great for you. But Thank just don't come in with a misconception. And that's why I really do this podcast a lot, because it tells people about different people's experiences, but it also tells people like, look, this is how it's going to be. And you got to be able to make a decisive decision in the real world, right? Because in college, you get a grade. In the real world, you can really get into that mental health or you can get fired or, or, or even worse. So that's why I like to do that. It's a lot of give and take, you know, and you have to, and I would definitely say there are some things you have to be willing to risk and let go of, you know, for yeah. example, for me, I find that, you know, because of, you know, my transportation, how long I need to be, you know, taking things into consideration, 
I like to prioritize going to the gym. So what am I going to do? Unfortunately, I'm going to go right before work. So I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning. But knowing that because I want to get that done, I'm going to go to sleep later. And does that mean I don't get to stay up and hang out with friends as often as I'd like to? Yes. Right. But I'm putting in the work because I know that I want to get that done. I know I want to go to the gym because that's a goal that I have. I also know that I want to work really hard at work. And then, you know, if it if it does take a little bit of time away from, you know, some of the things I like, then that's fine. But if I can work hard now and play hard later, mm. then, then that's what I have to do. I love it. I do. And listen, you to to, to end it, you, your friends are your day one friends, I should say, understand what your schedule is. And they'll work uh, just like my friends do and just like your friends do. Waking up early in the morning. Yeah. If you wake up that early, you might not can't go out and have a drink later or have a late dinner. I know yeah. for me, uh, don't nobody want to hang out Tuesday night at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> don't and those who do, kudos to you because I cannot. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I mean? So don't nobody want to do that. And I get it. You know, I'm by myself. <laughs> but that's what I signed up for doing sports. Sports are nights and weekends. So that's what it is. But it's a great segue to this next question, which is advice. What is advice that you would give someone that wants to join uh, in the media business, in the journalism business, or maybe do something that you want to do? Somebody comes up to you and say, Daniela, I want to do what exactly what you're doing. What advice would you give that individual to prepare them? My biggest thing, and I think I mentioned this before, was networking. Speak to whoever you can. You know, if you're in college, Speak to the professors in, you know, for example, in the journalism department, see who they have connections to. I know that at Rutgers, they have um, in the journalism department, they have this kind of career board where every week or so they say, oh, you know, here's a new intern. Here's a list of internships that are happening or opening up soon. Look at that. So looking at that, talking to career experts, um, they have a lot of the networking events, you know, in New York and I'm sure in other places as well go to those I know it's it's nerve-wracking you know going into a space you know especially if you go alone and you're just like I have no idea who anyone is I don't know anything like that but just go because you never know you know I I think I went to a networking event for sports and you know I'm so not in the industry to know a lot about sports but I was like you know what let me see let me see if I can expand my knowledge and, and you know experience and I did and I went and I had a great time and I spoke to people and I made connections because I in this industry a lot, whether it's, you know, you need, you know, an interview from so and so or something like that, having that connection is absolutely cool. it'll take it take you far. And they have advice and experience that they can share as well. And so if you say, Okay, well, you know, I wanna work as a sports journalist. I have all these lists of people that I had met and I had spoken to, maybe not for too long, but, you know, enough for us to have, you know, casual conversation. Let me reach out to them to see what their experiences, what their life um, advice that they have for me in terms of career and who they can connect me with. Because at the end of the day, I think, you know, really with any job, it's a lot of who you know to help to help you, not necessarily, you know, give you straight a job right away because that's not always how it works, but kind right. of give you clear a path or, you know, build a plan and say, okay, you know, you want to get here. Let's see how we can work on that. And having those sure. mentors and sponsors um, as well too, that's great support. Great support. Absolutely. Uh, terrific advice. Uh, and I always tell my high schoolers out here um, that I cover for sports. If this is something that you want to do, you definitely want to network um, because everybody's going to have a degree. Uh, more than likely, every you have to differentiate yourself a little bit, and, how you do and that. which I, I know can be you know a little unfortunate for some people, but you know it's it's like you need to find a niche, you need to find you know an extra certificate, you find <laughs> find yourself something just to let yourself stand out, you know, because not you know just the degree isn't always isn't enough anymore sometimes. It's not. Uh, and and mind you, um, I I love networking. I love. I, listen, I cold email too. So so <laughs> I love I love cold emailing people, talking to people, uh, because everybody's story is unique. Uh, um, everybody's story is yeah. different. Um, like you said, you went to a sporting event. That's actually one of the other reasons why I'm coming to New York because I'm also going to be going there to do uh, a sports career fair. I think it's a combination of New York and New Jersey. Uh, sport and career fair that's going to be coming up soon yeah um and i love traveling i love traveling going to different places and doing that i'm the type of person 
Daniela, I will get about 50 to 60 resumes, print them up, then get ready to go. Oh, Uh, and the digital resumes nowadays too. That's right. So easy. nothing, nothing will stop me being able to do uh, what I would love to do, which is be in this industry and nothing should stop you at all. If you want this, then you go after it. And that's what I tell all my, uh, my young you boys. Won't and girls. push until you can't push anymore. And then you'll find a way to push more. <laughs> Hello, I'm with you on that. Totally. That's what's up. Okay. I like that. Um, We've come to the portion now of this podcast where now we're going to do this or that. So basically what it is, I'm going to throw two things at you and you get to choose this or that. Danielle, are you with me? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay, here we go. So there's, we've been vibing all podcast long. This first question is important. Okay. Popeyes or KFC? KFC. Okay, I'm with you on that. Okay. Now, do you eat chicken wings? I do. Okay, so let me ask you, which flavor would you rather choose? Barbecue or lemon pepper? Personally, I go with lemon pepper. Okay. Now, something tells me you'd rather have a different sauce with the face that you made. Are you a <laughs> buffalo person? I can be. I think it just has to be. I have to be in a specific mood. But usually, I go lemon pepper. Okay. I'm with you on that. Do you like your wings wet or dry? Hmm. Definitely wet. Okay. And do you like your wings bone in or boneless? Bone in. Oh, so you like to get a little messy. I like that. Okay. <laughs> you got to get you a wet wipe. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. I I'm with you. I, I, like, I like that too. I like that too. Okay. Here we go. These next four have to do with concerts. You rather attend. Okay. So first concert here. Which artist would you rather go see? Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Ooh. Okay. Um, Kendrick Lamar. Okay, I'm with you on that. Which concert would you rather go see? Would you rather go see Lil Wayne or J. Cole? Oh, wow. Ooh, it's been a while since I've listened to either of them. Um, J. Cole. I'll do J. Cole. J. Cole? Okay. Which artist would you rather go see in person? Would you rather go see Wisin and Iyandel? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Wisin Yandel or Pitbull? Wisin and Yandel. They're Ooh. old school reggaeton. You, yeah, you, there's no doubting that one. <laughs> hey, listen, you ain't got to, you ain't got to sweet talk me. I'm with you on Wisin and Yandel. I'm with you on that. Yes, indeed. Okay. Last one of the concerts. Which one would you rather go see? Chris Brown or Usher? Chris Brown. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm with you on that. All right. I've, Which, I've seen a little snippets of concerts on TikTok. I'm like, yeah, I need to go. I need to go see. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Say less. He's very good, by the way, uh, in person. Very good in person. No uh, sure. Have you seen him in person? I have. I have. But not recently, but a few years ago. I'm actually going to see Usher in person next month. He's coming here to uh, uh, Minneapolis. So, okay, so you have to let me know between the two which one had a better concert. Girl, I got you. Don't say less. <laughs> well, I feel you on that. I feel you. Okay. All right, I'll be go. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Which um sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? Oh, badminton. Okay, now. We're going to have to see what's up now because you know I'm pretty good at badminton. Just oh, really? Okay, okay. All right, okay. so it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It is. It is. No doubt, no doubt. I'm, I'm terrible in bowling. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and no, my hand eye coordination is not the greatest. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, no doubt. No doubt on that one. Okay. <laughs> Which sport would you rather watch on TV? Would you rather watch basketball or football? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> football. Football. <laughs> Why do you say oh? <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you said that's interesting. Ow. That's interesting. <laughs> that's exactly what you said. Okay, I dig it. Football. Uh <laughs> two of my favorite sports. I love it. Um uh, do you like desserts, Daniela? <laughs> yes, I love desserts. I actually read I actually bake a lot more often than I cook, fun fact. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. When I pull up out there, just let me know. <laughs> I could be a taste tester now. I'm just telling you. 
A little okay. birthday cake will go right to you. <laughs> oh, I, I certainly would appreciate it. I wouldn't <laughs> expect it, but I appreciate it, no doubt. Here we go with the desserts. I'm going to throw out four categories. You got to choose one of these that you'll okay. never eat again. Okay, so it's hypothetical. So here we go. First one is cookies. The next one is cake. The next one is ice cream. The last one is candy. Which one are you getting rid of that you'll never eat again? Candy. I'm with you on that, girl. I knew it was going to be good. Yeah. I knew. I, damn it. I said it was going to be good. I said she's going to say candy out her mouth. I knew she was going to say candy. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Candy. Here's my here's my reasoning for candy. And mm -hmm. that's because red velvet cake is my favorite cake. And I'm not giving up on that. Uh, cookies and cream is my favorite ice cream, and I'm not giving up on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, chocolate chip cookies, along with the white fudge Oreos, they only sell them during um, the holiday time. Uh, the white fudge Oreos that come 12 in a box, they're so good. Yes, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my reasoning for why I would say can't. So. And that's very valid reasoning. <laughs> you, I and appreciate And he's not like that. You can't be creative like that. I feel you on that. Okay. So now, do you like potato chips? Love potato chips. Okay. So this is the same format. I'm going to throw out four brands. You have to get rid of one of these brands. You'll never eat again. Okay. So here we go. First one is Doritos. Mm. The second one is Lay's. Mm -hmm. The third one is Ruffles. The last one is Pringles. Which one are you getting rid of? Mm. I would have to say Pringles only because I love to put chips in sandwiches and I feel like Pringles wouldn't really go. Oh my Lord, I met somebody. I didn't met a twin. <laughs> oh, my, oh my Lord, I met a twin. Somebody love to put their chips in too. Look, look here, look here. That excites me a little bit. I, I'm sorry, I got a little bit excited. I love putting, uh, I'm a wheat bread that's person. The only, that's the only way to eat a sandwich. <laughs> well, listen, uh, people told me that, that that's something that you don't do around here. And I'm like, wow. Uh, in what city and state? Because every city and state I lived in, that was expected. You, you put your <laughs> chips in a sandwich and you crunch it up and you eat it up. That's what I do. Exactly. And, but here in, in Minnesota, I've been told <laughs> several times, you don't do that. And I'm like, well, hell, I'm gonna do Too what bad. you don't. Do. <laughs> I'm gonna do what you don't do because for me, I get my wheat bread. I'm a turkey person. I don't know about you, but I'm huge in turkey. Now. Yes. Turkey, cheese, and I'll put barbecue. I'll put sour cream and onion. I'll put the the greatest chip ever made was ruffle sour cream and cheddar. I'll put them things up in there and I'll smash it and I'll eat it. That's just me. It's just it's it's just something about chips and sandwiches that it's just. And it takes it to a whole nother level. I'm trying. I'm trying. Girl, you ain't got to sweet talk me again. I'm trying to tell you. I know what it is. I know what it is. People sleeping out here. They in a coma out here when it comes to that. <laughs> Straight up. You did pretty well on this or that. Um, You did pretty good. I love asking this next question. And this next question has to do with if you wasn't involved in media or journalism, what career path would you have chosen and why? Definitely, I would have gone into baking. I love to bake. Love baking. Um, literally, give me anything. Ask, ask me anything. And I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out if I've never done it before. But I'm just like, just throw me in the kitchen and I'll be there for hours. Okay, now. Nah. Okay. We, we were talking to the next Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray point. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to step aside. <laughs> okay, I love that though. I really do. I love the baking part. I would probably be in theater, um, because I'm I'm huge into plays and musicals. Um, having yeah, active... I would probably be too, but I just can't sing for the life of me. <laughs> yeah, listen, hey, listen. Uh, when you get a nice cold beverage inside of you or a couple of drinks, everybody sound like Whitney Houston when they got a couple. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Let's all see the audience. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Like, you may not sing when you walk up there, but after you start drinking a little bit, woo, <laughs> your voice sounds beautiful. Like That's the all next I'm saying. Then I'm telling you, you'll be the American Idol. That's what it is. <laughs> okay? So, I love that. Um, I want to talk to you about a top uh, four. 
And what I mean by that is, is a top four events or top four things that you would like to produce or maybe like to cover or attend um, in the journalism realm. And I'll give you an example with my top four, which is one is Super Bowl. I definitely want to cover one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Two would be NBA Finals. I'm huge into basketball. Three would be the World Series. Hopefully my damn Padres will get there. But that would be great. Four would be, uh, I know, right? I know it. A national championship game. So whether it's uh, college football or college basketball, but those would be my four. With the Olympics being obvious, like that's obviously coming here uh, in Los Angeles in 2028. Obviously, I would love to be there too. But yeah, what are the top four that you would like to cover? So I, the, the Olympics was my number one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would definitely want to cover the World Cup because I think that would be in, like just incredible. That'd be insane. And, and like especially because you know it's coming here too. So you just, you know, you just I can't even imagine. Um, what else? What else? I would love to um cover a um like a Latin event, as in like the Latin Grammys, or they have like the Premios to win soon. Because, you know, I, I mean, I just love like his, Hispanic culture, Hispanic music, and just to be able to go there and just cover that, I think that'd be, you know, amazing. Absolutely. Um, and then what would be kind of interesting, I would say, is um, the, when it comes to voting and, the, and politics, I think that would just be, that'd be great. You know, the voting day is coming up very soon. And just, yeah. you know, not even just the inauguration, but just the the final decision time. I think that would just be crazy. Only because not necessarily, you know, you're creating a story out of it, but seeing the reactions of everyone. I think that would just be like, wow. You know, not necessarily for this one specifically, but just, you know, I think just any any political event in general, I think it's just, it's, it's interesting to see those reactions. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, it's important to go out there and vote, uh, not just vote for the president, but vote locally as well, because it starts on the local land before we can even get to the national land of change of what you want to see in your communities. No no question about that. Um, I love the fact you said the Latin Grammys, because I could totally see you on the red carpet. I totally could see you on the red carpet, <laughs> interviewing different artists and different people. I think you have great conversations. I think people will actually stop and talk to you, have long conversations. I mean, oh, I who, who knows? we'll see. Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, we got to put it out in the air first. And then w w once it's manifested, then it's possible it can come true. So there you go. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. So this next question has to do with advice. Now, we asked about advice that you would give someone of a you know postgraduate or someone that wants to be in your shoes and do your job. But what is some advice that someone has given you that you hold on dearly to? I think the biggest one um, comes when, you know, when you're thinking about career and you're always thinking about the money aspect of it. Sure. Um, you know, while everyone wants to have, you know, that big job where you get, you know, all the money and everything like that, like, of course, that's great. But if you don't love your job, it's not gonna it's not worth it and so one piece of advice that I that I got that I just I held on to was do something that you're passionate about and the money will come later mm -hmm. um and I held on to that for so long not necessarily because I think you know the money is like the number one thing I'm looking for but if I want to do something I want to make sure I'm enjoying it you know and everything else will come after that because you know, if I'm not having a good time and if I'm not, you know, smiling when I come in or when I'm thinking about my job, then, you know, then it's time for for something else. Because, you know, think everything will fall into place when it needs to and however it has to. Um, but you always have to set that path first, you know, because like we said, mental health and you just own, you know, pure just excitement about something is, is really what drives a lot of people to do what they want and be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I rather forego trying to get all the money I possibly can to work at a job that I actually love to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, obviously we want both if it comes with, I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely want to wake up happy doing what you want to do, uh, doing what you love to do. Cause there's a lot of people out there for a plethora of reasons that work at jobs that they're not very happy at. 
Uh, but they still work at them because they have the reasons why. But I just rather work at a job that I love. Mm -hmm. um, and I truly love storytelling. And I love doing this too, talking to wonderful people like yourself, because it's amazing to see other people's mindset of how they grind and what they think about. Uh, it's inspiring to me. Uh, it even it further motivates me to want to continue doing what I'm doing uh, when I'm hearing different stories from people on this platform of mine. So I do appreciate you very much uh, for, for talking with me tonight. This has been amazing. We are almost at the end. Uh, this is a rapid fire though, okay? So Daniela, the All first right. thing that comes into your mind, I want you to speak on it, okay? Okay. Okay. Nervous, okay. I I know. I know. Ow, I know. You're nervous. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I totally understand. Okay, here we go. Burgers or tacos? Tacos. Okay. Waffles or pancakes? Pancakes. Okay. Uh ribs or chicken? Ribs. Okay. Nicks or nets? Knicks. Okay. Islanders or Devils? That one I do not know. <laughs> so the, those two are hockey teams. Those the New York okay. Islanders or the New Jersey Devils? Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Teams, duh. Okay. But their performance wise, I don't know. But since I'm Jersey, we'll go with the Jersey Devils. Got you. If there was three songs, that you can listen to on repeat and continuously listen to and never get oh tired of, what would those songs be? Oh my God, I would have to go back into my Spotify playlist to see my, to my record here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's switch it up. What about artists? Artists you would never get tired of listening to. Give me three artists. Okay. Um, since I mentioned them already, definitely Bad Bunny. Okay. Give me one of them. Um, I love salsa music, so one of them would be Mark Anthony. Can you dance? Oh, I can dance. Yes, yes. Okay. I can actually, you... I've used to, um, I used to be a salsa dance teacher. Okay, so real quick, I got two left feet. I'm 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 pretty bad uh, <laughs> when it comes to dancing. Is there any way that you can teach me? How about you teach me something when I come out there? How about that? You got it. You got it. And even though you got to live, don't worry. Don't worry. I've I've taught so many different people from different um backgrounds and how to dance, and they've gotten it. They've gotten it. It's slow uh, progress, but they've gotten right. it. Right. I mean, hip hop, R and B, that's my thing now. I can do that. But when it comes to salsa, well, these size 13 feet don't move well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry with that. But go ahead. You said bad bunny and you said uh salsa Maybe. music and what else? Um, salsa music, definitely. And then um Romeo Santos's band Aventura. Okay. Aventura. We're going all all Hispanic music. I love it. I love it. I do. Okay. Favorite color? Turquoise. Okay. Favorite sandwich. Ooh, it would be turkey, lettuce, provolone on white bread with just a bunch of sauces on it. <laughs> Feel you on that. Okay. Spades or dominoes? Ooh, spades. Can you play spades? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah, let me it down, man. <laughs> you got me saying it now. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. That's my game now. Let me find out. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, favorite, I would say, TV show? The Big Bang Theory. Stop it. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Yes. Yes, it is. Wow. Wow. That's my favorite TV show, too. Really? It really, really is. Yeah, it is. Um, I, and to be honest with you, it what didn't always start out as my favorite TV show. I actually was breaking. I was a Breaking Bad guy, if you know what okay. Breaking Bad is. Okay. Um, and, but my mother, <laughs> of all people, I went and visited her uh, one Thanksgiving, and she was watching this show. And I said, what you watching? She's like, Big Bang Theory. And I was like, I was hooked after I saw a few episodes of Sheldon. and uh, I really think it's Sheldon that just, it, it, mm -hmm. he just, just had to laugh at him all the time. Absolutely. No question. Him and Penny's relationship is ridiculous. So I love, I <laughs> I love mean, that. And then throw in Howard into the mix. Howard and Raj. They're just. 
<laughs> you ain't never lied. You have never lied on that. That's true. My, my favorite was always Bernadette. I love Bernadette. You so that was, that was my favorite. Um, <laughs> okay, we got a few more of the rapid fire. Favorite board game? Ooh. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I would have to say Parcheesi. And only because I've played it with so many family members and, you know, family members that have passed too. So it just has such a long history to it. And it's always fun when you see people getting competitive <laughs> on a game like Parcheesi. <laughs> it is now, because I definitely. Now, I'm going to also give you a fun fact. I don't know what Parcheesi is. You don't know what Parcheesi is? No. I'm like, no, it's I'm honestly. I don't even know how would you even describe it, but it's kind of like Monopoly in a sense. But oh. like you, like the little action, like figurines, they're all yeah. animals, and then, <laughs> and like I don't even know how to explain it. But it's just it's such a cute little game that you know it's it's for little kids. But you know, whenever family comes over, it's one of those staple games you just have to play. Absolutely, mine would probably be Mancala. If you remember the Mancala when you oh picked that, God. up. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Um, but for the sake of my mom's, I would say Monopoly because she just loves beating me whenever she has boardwalk and park place. She just loves to do that. So and showing off all the money that she's gathered. <laughs> right, right. So no question about it. For her sake, uh, definitely being a mama's boy, I would say Monopoly too. <laughs> um, last of the radar questions: Which one would you rather do if you had to do this position for the rest of your career? whether it's be producer, assistant, or reporter, which one would you do? Oh, wow. Um, I would definitely want go to the side of producer. Okay. Producer. I like, I like yeah. that. I, I really, I really do like that for you for sure. Um, this has been a really dope conversation. No, thank you. So I've had so much fun and, you know, just, just having these laughs and just connecting like this, it's, it's, it makes such, such a great conversation and I really enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen, people should know uh, of what you do, which you explained that pretty thoroughly. People should know who you are as well. Um, and you worked really hard, obviously two degrees that you have assistant, uh, also being an intern, your daily schedule of waking up early in the morning, the fact that you are very good at badminton, the fact that, you, which is pretty good, that's pretty awesome. Um, and the fact that just getting to know you a little bit has been so amazing. Um, I always end my podcast like this. Is there anything else you would like to add about yourself or anything in general before we conclude? Um, honestly, not necessarily by myself, but, you know, to anyone watching and listening, um, just go about life having fun and with a smile because it just makes every day so much better um and you know you just never you know throwing out positives out there and just being you know just being happy all the time making the best of everything it can really go a long way so, yeah absolutely wonderfully said and listen you take care and enjoy the rest of your sunday night you and i will definitely be in touch because we got some things we got to square up <laughs> That's for sure. But you take care and enjoy your week, okay? Thank you. You too. Have a great time. <laughs> Bye-bye.